This is by far the toughest challenge I have ever done. My body hurts and I'm totally exhausted mentally. So I guess some of you have run into us. It's often short distances to improve speed. But did you know there is a thing called Ultra Interval Challenge? It's a challenge where the participants run 10 kilometers every three hours for a whole day and you start your first interval at midnight. And if you do all the intervals, you will collect 80 kilometers. Between the intervals, the body will have little time to recover and is forced to keep going for almost 24 hours. And this means that you will go through the same phases as you do during a really long ultra, when you often have problems with energy intake and also the mental aspect of running for a long time. But the advantage is that you get a lower load on muscles, tendons and ligaments since you only will run for 80k. In this video, I will tell you my story when I attempted this challenge. You will follow along on my highs and lows and I will give you my thoughts of what I've learned and any advice that I can think of that will come in handy if you want to do this challenge as well. Since I have a 100k trail race coming up, my intention was that by doing this challenge I will get some experience of how I will feel at the latter half of the race. So if you run every 10k for about an hour, there will be barely two hours between each interval. And I decided to take the intervals a bit as they came without any major preparation. However, I presented clothes, reflective vest and a headlamp for my night shifts since I assumed I would be very tired then. And as I said before, you start running the first interval at the midnight. So I went to bed around 10 o'clock to hopefully get an hour of sleep. And I had set the clock at a quarter to 12. When the phone rang, it was quite easy to get up. And since this was the first interval, I was excited and had no clue of what was coming. The first interval went pretty easily. I ran slowly to be sure I had the strength left for the remaining seven intervals. I actually even met another runner, so I was not the only crazy person out there. But it was dark, so I got to use my headlamp. First 5k done in my first ultra interval. And here you can see my stats from Strava. I ran 10 kilometers and it took me 57 minutes. What I noticed was that my heart rate was much higher than usual and it must have something to do with the fact that I ran so late in the day. When I got home I quickly jumped into bed and set the clock at 2.45. The first intervals had gone well but now I would run the one that I was most worried about at 3 o'clock at night. I knew it would be cold, dark and that I would be very tired. When the phone rang, I had slept a little or nothing, and although I was tired, I did my job and went up and got dressed for my second interval. I was cold even before I was going out, so I wore a lot of clothes. My legs felt perfectly okay, so it was mostly the mental tough, and as I said, it was dark and cold outside. The few who was out driving were turning their heads in confusion when they saw me. Five kilometers into the second interval and it's half past three I knew that the faster I ran, more rest I would get between the intervals, but on the other hand, I couldn't run too fast either to have strength left for the remaining intervals. But it made me run these 10k faster than the interval before. And here you can see my stats from Strava. This next time I had to set the clock at 5.45 and I thought that the worst interval in terms of tiredness was done. But I was wrong. I couldn't sleep and I went up a couple of times and had just gotten 20 minutes of rest when the phone rang at 5.45. Except of being really tired, I also felt something in my knee that I have never felt before and I wasn't sure if it was the beginning of an injury or not. But I had decided before doing this challenge that I wouldn't continue running if something felt wrong since I didn't want to jeopardize my entire running season. So besides the issue in my knee, I was totally exhausted and my body was nearly dead with fatigue. I, who had thought that it was the interval that I ran 3 o'clock at night that would be the toughest, was completely taken by how I felt. I then started negotiating with myself. 
since I had felt the pain in my knee, I had something to blame. And I also convinced myself that I had run the two toughest intervals in the middle of the night, so now I could be satisfied with that. By this time, I only had slept a couple of hours in one day, and I woke up my husband and said I couldn't run any more intervals since I had a sore knee. It felt like a valid reason to end this challenge. But although he almost was asleep, he told me that I couldn't take this decision when I was in bed. He said I had to get up and get dressed and then decide and if I wanted to make this choice. He was right, of course. The reason to why I wanted to do this challenge in the first place was because of this, to run when I'm tired and worn out. So I got my shit together and went out on my third interval and without any pain in my knee. But it was tough and I felt like crying, as you can do when you're really tired. But the city had woken up and it was bright outside. I have never longed so much for my bed at this time. When I got home, I ate a bowl of frosties before I went to bed, and you can see my stats from Strava right here. By now, I had run 30k and I set the clock at 8.45, ready for my fourth interval. This time, I fell asleep for at least one hour, and when the phone rang, I was obviously still very tired, but now I knew that after this interval, I would have completed half of this challenge. It became my fastest interval, and I think it's due to the that it was now daytime and my legs felt pretty fine. And here again are my stats from Strava. Before doing this challenge, I never thought I would be this very tired. Since I was going to have a conference call at 12.30, I had to start the next interval half an hour earlier. I had no appetite but ate an egg, took a shower and massaged my poor legs with a massage gun. And that massage gun really helped me during this challenge. I had my legs up high until it was time to go out on my fifth interval. So with only one hour and a half of rest, I had to go out on my fifth interval. I had now run 40k barely without sleep, so I was completely exhausted. Since I didn't want to eat my any real food until the fifth interval, I was also very low on energy. And this was therefore my second worst interval after the one I ran at six in the morning. But what kept me going was that I knew that Thanks to the missing half an hour of recovery during the last rest, I will now get half an hour extra. And here you have my stats from my fifth interval. After a shower, I ate a big vegan burger and french fries. I had now reached a huge milestone since I had run 50 kilometers and I only had three intervals left. My biggest concern during this day was that I would have to cancel due to an injury, but due to the fact that I ran slow for my standards, it felt fine in that regards. My body ached, but it was mostly during the first 10 minutes of each interval before I started. And starting each interval, my stride length became shorter and shorter, but I managed to keep a high frequency, so the total time didn't become much slower. I have run over 50 kilometers in one go before this challenge, but this was much harder. Constantly starting a run with an aching and tired body was a real challenge. And by the way, I'm Tess, and since I'm competing in everything between 5k road races to 100k trail races, there's a lot to choose from on my channel. And from time to time, you will also follow along when I run some of my races. So if this is something for you, please subscribe to my channel. So I went out for my sixth run at three o'clock and I was ready to cry even though there were only three intervals left, but I had no energy left whatsoever. What kept me going was thinking that I did this for a reason, to build endurance and mental strength for my future ultra races. Thanks to the fact that I had run many marathons, I'm used to these kind of mental battles often when you come to 30, 35 kilometers into a marathon race. This is by far the toughest challenge I have ever done. My body hurts and I'm totally exhausted mentally. It ain't going fast right now. It's my sixth interval and everything hurts. But it was tough to come back after each interval and knowing that you had to go out once again. And you can see my stats from the sixth interval right here. And this became my second slowest interval. I had now run 60 kilometers and I had two intervals left. 
It was now 6 o'clock and it was time for my second last interval. The thing that kept me going was the thought that after this I only had one interval left. I had now ran 70 kilometers and I could feel it in every part of my body. And here are my stats from Strava once again. And now it was 9 in the evening and it was time for my very last interval. I had now barely got any sleep for 40 hours and although I only had 10 kilometers left of this challenge, it felt tough to get out again. I asked to be filmed when I started this last interval to show you that I by now had lost all posture and I had the short and stiff footstep. When I had 4 kilometers left, I really began to realize that I was nearing the end and I began to feel grateful that I had managed to run for this long. 4 k's left on this ultra interval challenge. Keeps me going faster when I know it's soon over. It's been tough. It's unreal, I did it. It's so unreal. Oh, this was by far the toughest runs I have ever done in my whole life. Although the last 3 to 4 kilometers felt mentally effortless, it was as you can see my slowest interval. But I think it also had to do with the fact that I now knew that I didn't have to make it home to have time to eat and rest before my next interval, so I had no stress. And I had now run 80 kilometers and it's take me about 7 hours and 30 minutes. The feeling that I, despite all the physical and mental dips, had completed this challenge was indescribable. That I had preserved with every interval, although my body had shouted stop. And doing these kind of challenges strengthen you as a person and you learn new things about yourself. I have completed a couple of ultra races and 15 marathons, but this was far by the toughest I have ever done. But the tougher challenge is, and you can handle it, the greater the satisfaction is when you're done. And what have I learned from this then? Above all, I learned that it's much tougher than I could have ever thought to run without hardly any sleep. It was also the first time I negotiated with myself and was about to give up. I'm used to negotiating with myself at the end of all marathons, but then the smart side always win. Getting this little amount of sleep affected me more than I could have ever imagined. I think it would have been an advantage to start this challenge early in the morning instead and run the last interval at 3 o'clock in the night after, but it's hard to say. But I wanted to do this challenge as it was intended, and that is to start at midnight. If you want to test your limits as well, I can really recommend this challenge. It's not the same as running one long distance in one go. To come home after a run and then knowing that you will soon have to go out and run 10 kilometers again and again is brutal. But this challenge is also kind to your body and you will have a somewhat fast recovery since you didn't run the distance in one go. And I hope you enjoyed this video and have a nice run and I see you soon. Bye!